Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And guess what? I don't have to be in the house to be in the house. Help me, somebody. I don't have to be in the house to be in the house. Fortunately, I am in the house, but I'm still glad I could be in my own house. And when I come into worship, I find myself in the house. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. It's right where it was. Keep it right there. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know about you, but, but I'm so glad that this is the day that the Lord has made. And yes, we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody give somebody a virtual high five and let them know this is the day. This, this is the day. Text somebody. This is the day. Two-way somebody. This is the day. Facebook somebody. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Giving honor to God to uh, Pastor C for uh, this opportunity, amen, to, to stand behind this holy desk. I do thank you, sir, and thank you for your prayers. To our assistant pastor at North, Reverend Erica, God bless you, amen. To Brother Ellis, work, Reverend Ellis, working with our youth ministry, God bless you. And to our worship leader, Brother Rodney, God bless you, and, and it's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Y'all that know me know that I preach like I am short. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. Y'all can go ahead and text short. That way when I see it, I know my time is winding up. Amen. Praise the Lord. But this, 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 when the pastor had talked to me about it, I, I immediately went into prayer, and, 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 and I do want to say to all the seniors that have graduated, uh, we are so proud of you, those of you that have gone on from kindergarten and graduated to the first grade, if you graduated from elementary school and went on to middle school, and if you went from middle school to high school, if you went from high school to, to college or, or, or to trade school, or, or even if you were undecided, thank God you still have options, amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. You can be undecided and have options, and that's a good thing. Those that are going on to the military, God bless you. And to the parents that, as Reverend Erica said it so, so eloquently, that you have become professors. Amen. Some of y'all teaching without a degree. Help me, somebody. Amen. You're teaching without a degree, but won't God do it? Somebody say, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Well, uh, 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 the, the, the time is long, and I'm going to be short, so let's bow in a word of prayer. Gracious God, as we come now, we do thank and praise you for this day and for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity to gather in your house of worship. Father, we just thank you because you are good, merciful, and kind. Now, Lord, as we come, uh, uh, somebody stands in need of a word. Fathers, I stand. I stand in need of a word. Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. Give us the clarity of thought, articulation of speech sincerity in our spirit and send a fresh anointing thank you that you're already here but i need a fresh touch we love you now and we thank you now lord let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight in jesus name we pray amen and amen. Let, let me just do a few, three more things, and then I'll be out of your way. Uh, first, again, want to uh, uh, wish her happy birthday to First Lady. God bless you, and happy birthday to you. And I do want to send a shout-out to my folks, uh, Ronald and Barbara. Thank you for your prayers, and, and thank y'all. Because if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be here. So thank the Lord for y'all. Amen. And then um, to Reginald. Um, <laughs> you know, two years ago. I said I wasn't going to. Two years ago, we, he, we almost lost him. Whew. But God has and still is and continues to be faithful. And for that, I do give God thanks. Well, I want to call your attention to a passage of Scripture that's very familiar in your hearing. Coming from Esther, the fourth chapter. Ah, the 13th through the 16th verse. Esther, the fourth chapter, verses uh, 13 through 16. Oh, and thank you to our music ministry, our, our video and audio ministry, and to every, our security ministry, and God bless you. Esther, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 16. And here beginneth God's word. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Don't think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. 
For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther said to them, Reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan, and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days nor night. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor, y'all that are in here. Look at each other and say, it's your time. It's your time. You sitting in your bed or at your coffee table, at the dining room table, on the living room couch, those that are streaming, just text somebody or go ahead and hit them on Facebook and let them know it's your time. It's your time. Amen. It's your time. My sisters and my brothers, uh, timing in life is everything. In, in timing for the people of faith and in general, we realize and understand that nothing happens by chance. It is because God is still in control, and I repeat, God still is in control, that everything happens according to his timing. Uh, for nothing really happens by circumstance. And it's not a small thing, graduates, that you graduated during this certain time in history. I don't know if you realize it or not or if it's sunk in, but you are actually history makers. You, the class of 2020, have made history. And yes, believe it or not, it is your time. Not only is it your time because you graduated, it's also your time to help make a change. Uh, you made it for a reason. No, you didn't get up, give up. You stayed the course even in the midst of COVID-19 when schools were shut down and you had virtual learning and virtual graduation. Believe it or not, this really is your time. And one of the things that I understand about God is, is God doesn't do things in the conventional way. Amen. When, when God gets ready to make a move, he does not do things conventionally, for he's the same God that told Moses in the midst of a drought, not Moses, told Noah in the midst of a drought to go build an ark. Help me, somebody. I know I got Bible scholars out there. And so you have to realize and understand that when God gets ready to move, he doesn't move in the normal way, but God will do something super unnatural and unconventional so that he can get your attention to let you know that he's still smiling on you. Uh -huh, because it still is your time. Yes, Shelby Stevens, it's your time. Christopher Warner, it's your time. Dietrich Funderburg, it's your time. Faith Washington, it's your time. Emmanuel Fong, it's your time. Tyler Frazier, it's your time. Mia Stone, it's your time. And yes, Reginald Crump, it still is your time. Go ahead and hit somebody up and let them know it's my time. Now, at a time when you can realize just your time, when you can realize that even through racism and you're still alive, it's your time. With systematic racism is now becoming the norm for the day. One of the countries from counties from which many of you graduated had not even celebrated a Juneteenth in over a decade. You have to realize now, 2020, when vision is straight, that it is your time. Uh -huh. It's your time to go out and make a change in the world in which you live. You never know how God is going to use you, but you have to make the most out of every opportunity God gives you. Mm -hmm. Whether you go to college, whether you go to work, trade school, the military, still have other options, be all that you can be because God is calling you to be who he made you to be. You have to understand and know that this is God did not bring you this far to leave you alone. Let's be clear this 
this morning, you could have easily been, can I call the roll for a minute? You could have easily been an Emmett Till, a Trayvon Martin, a Michael Brown, a Tamar Rice, a Freddie Gray, a Sean Bell, a Hamid Aubrey, a Eric Gardner, a Rayshard Bell, or a Daniel Ellis, a George Floyd, or even a Breonna Taylor. But I just stopped by to let you know, because God kept you, it still is your time. No, you weren't a victim of COVID-19. It is your time. G -g -g Give me just a few more minutes and, and, and I'm going to be out your way. Huh? But not only is it with racism, it's time to speak not only about racism, but it's time to speak to our black brothers and sisters about black on black crime. Help me, somebody. It still is your time. Well, now, let, 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 let me tag the text, and then I'll be out your way. Is that all right? Uh, in Esther, the fourth chapter, we now see where Esther, the niece of Mordecai, had been promoted to Queen Esther and now has a seat in the kingdom of King Asherus. And there was a man named Haman. Y'all need to read the book because I can't tell the whole story this morning. So you got to go read Esther. There was a man named Haman who had been promoted in King Asherus' a kingdom also. Understand that Esther and Mordecai were Jews who worshiped the one and only true God. They were living in a land ran by a Persian empire that believed in many gods. Now this Haman was a Persian and who had been promoted and believed that everybody ought to bow down to his position. Uh, don't that sound familiar? Uh-huh. And, and so understand, uh, Mordecai was a Jew. I ain't got to say it. You got it. Mordecai was a Jew and would not bow down to Haman. And Haman got upset and threw a trumper tantrum. Oop. I mean, a temper tantrum. And so he got upset and threw a tantrum and made a decree that killed all the Jews because they would not bow. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, Mordecai realized what was going on. And Mordecai heard about the decree. But because he knew his niece Esther was in the king's kingdom, he had to send a word to Esther. And when Esther got the word, she said, well, what am I going to do? She said, well, I'm going to have to make up in my mind and understand that I have to go see the king. But here, Morde Esther found herself in a precarious situation because the decree and the law said you can't come into the king's kingdom or, or you can't come in the king's court unless the king calls for you. And if you come into the king's court before you're called, that then the, the, the what happens is you can die. So Mom, Esther had to make up in her mind what what do I do now? I'm in a precarious situation, but I believe when she heard Mordecai's response, if you got to go, maybe you were called for such a time as this because Esther, it is your time. I, I, I said all that uh, to, to, to speak to the, the graduates uh, and to our streaming and Facebook audience, uh, to our conference call audience. Uh, not only is it the graduates' time, uh, but it's also our time uh, to make up in our mind. Uh, we have to make a move uh, to make up in our mind uh, that we have to stand up and say something. Uh, we can't be silent on the sideline, uh, letting everybody else do the work. Uh, now, I'll be honest with you. I I didn't take my kids down there during the uh, riot. I didn't take them down there during the march. But one thing I did is they needed to get a sense of history and feel the presence of the power. And so I took them down there on a good day when the daylight was out, when I felt it was safe, not only from COVID-19, but also safe from the police, safe from the craziness, and everybody had on a mask. Help me, somebody, because they need to know and we need to understand that it's time, it's our time to make a move. Watch, watch, watch. Uh, three simple things. And, 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 and how's my time, Rodney? And I'll be out your way. Uh, the first thing is uh, we have to understand uh, if we are going to be in our time uh, and it's our time, uh, we have to know our purpose and potential. Uh -huh. I had to combine the two uh, be because you can understand your purpose uh, and not know your potential. Uh, too many times, my sisters and brothers, uh, we get caught up uh, and we get caught up not in knowing who it 
what our purpose is. And if we don't know our purpose, we'll never have potential or we can have misguided potential. Watch this. When you understand what your purpose is, then you know how to govern correctly. When you know what your purpose is, you know how to live correctly. When you know your purpose, you know that you can affect everybody around you and you can have change. One thing I understand is when you are in the kingdom of God, you have to realize and understand that God already knows the plans that he has for your life. God has plans to give you a hope and a future. So every now and then, you may not know the plan for yourself, but you got to go to God and ask God, what is my purpose? What is my potential? Why was I made? Why was I born? Why was I conceived? You may not know your birth mama. You may not know your birth daddy, but that does not mean you do not have purpose and you don't have potential. You got to make up in your mind that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to understand that God thought about you even before mom and daddy got together. God has a plan for your life. Watch, watch, watch. You have to realize and understand. As Reverend Erica said, I got nervous because she said, he that hath begun a good work in you is able to perform it. Now, guess what? When you think about God in a good work in you, you can't look at your work and align it with somebody else. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, Be because understand what God has called one person to do, God called them to do. What God has called you to do, God's called you to do. And so don't miss your purpose trying to be like Mike, no offense, but don't lose and miss your purpose trying to be somebody that God has not called you to be. So you got to make up in your mind, I have to seek the face of God to understand what is my my purpose, huh? what is my potential, and what am I doing here? Ah, first thing, huh? I told you I could be long. You have to know your purpose and potential. Huh? The second thing is you have to know your position. Uh huh. I, I, I could go back to purpose and potential for a minute huh? because guess what? The problem with Esther, she did not understand her purpose nor her potential until she got a word from Mordecai. So y'all go back and read the story. Second thing is you have to know your potential, your, your, your position. Life has a way, and God has a way of lining things up. You see, Esther didn't realize that she was in the kingdom to save the nation. Mm -hmm. Esther wasn't clear when she got there, why she got there, and graduates and those that are watching, I don't care what season of your life you're in, you're in that position for a specific reason, but you have to know your position. Uh -huh. You see, Esther did not understand uh, that she was in there because she could speak a word. Uh, y'all know, y'all, let me talk to parents. Amen. Y'all, y'all know pillow talk. Amen. Uh, uh, she didn't know that she could have pillow talk uh, and talk to the king uh, and let him know what's going on uh, because his main man, Haman, uh, had put out a word uh, to kill all the Jews, but he Haman forgot that Mordecai was his man that had saved him a long time ago. And so she was in a place in a position to let the king know that regardless of how close you think Haman is and how much he's telling you what they're not doing, you got to remember what they did before. My God. And you can be in a position where you don't understand and realize what's going on but every now and then, huh, you got to speak to somebody and remind them where they came from. Huh? You got to remind them of what God can do. Huh? You got to remind them of who they are. Huh? You got to remind them of whose they are huh? because you can speak life, my God, to a dead situation. Huh? You're in a position now. Huh? Somebody may feel like giving up. Huh? You got to let them know the Lord will make a way somehow. Huh? Some people are in a position huh, where they don't know how they're going to make it. But you got to let them know, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Anybody this morning, you've been in a position where somebody spoke life to you, 
when you felt like throwing in the towel, you felt like giving up, but they said, hang on in there. He's going to turn it around. Even late in your midnight hour, God is still able to work out your situation and make a way out of no way. Understand, you have to know your purpose and your potential. Second thing, you have to know your position. So third thing, and I'm going to my seat on this one, because what did Esther say after she got the word from Mordecai? She said, well, now I guess a woman got to do what a woman got to do. But she told Mordecai, Mordecai, this is what I need y'all to do. I need you to gather all the men for and I need you to go and pray and fast for me for three days and three nights and my maids and I will fast likewise and then she said and so I will go to the king which is against the law and if I perish let me perish my sisters and my brothers you don't get that kind of faith not by knowing your purpose not by knowing your position nor by knowing your potential you only get that kind of faith by knowing how to pray. That's my third point, and I'm out of here. She said, you have to tell them, y'all go and pray. A lot of people know their purpose, and some know their potential, but they forget to put prayer on it. And when you forget to talk to God about your life, you can know a whole lot, but you could be going in the wrong direction. You know one thing. Let me tell you this. I'll tell on myself. I can't tell on anybody else. One day I was in D.C. and I was coming down to Brandywine. I told the story before, but I had my GPS on and my GPS was rerouting me all around the county. And I said, this woman must be crazy. But then once I coming down Branch Avenue, the traffic got in a standstill. I didn't know what was going on. But what I did not do is listen to somebody else that could see more than I could see. The GPS lady had a satellite system up in the sky, and she could see further down the road. It took me almost two hours to a drive that would have taken probably 45 minutes. If I had listened to her, even though I knew my direction, I knew my purpose. My purpose was to get to Brandywine. My potential was to keep on driving, and I knew my position. I was on the right road. I thought, but don't you know when we deal with God we can be on the right road as we think but when you talk to Jesus and tell him all about your situation I know that prayer will change things prayer will make a way out of no way prayer will move high mountains prayer will bring up low valleys prayer makes your crooked places straight prayer makes your a rough place to smooth. I don't know about you, but every now and then, I, not every now and then, but I got to pray all the day. I got to pray in the morning, pray in the noonday, and even pray in the midnight hour. When I'm riding in my car, I'm praying. When I'm on the bus, I'm praying. When I'm going to bed, I'm praying. And I don't always have to open my mouth, but deep down in my soul, the prayer wheel starts turning, the fire starts burning, and I feel the Lord making a way out of no way. Mark says, if you have faith in God, you can speak to the mountain, and the mountain has to move. Somebody got some mountains in their way. Make up in your mind, I'm going to pray. Make up in your mind, I'm going to seek his face. Make up in your mind that if I ask and I believe, it shall come to pass. Every now and then, you just got to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If I would draw thyself from me, where can I go? My sisters and my brothers, something's bound to happen when you pray. This morning, as I leave you, I'm so glad that Esther wasn't the only person 
that knew something about prayer. She wasn't the only person that knew about her potential. She wasn't the only person that knew about her purpose. I'm so glad my sisters and my brothers, my mind goes to a hill called Calvary. There was a man that knew about his purpose, his potential, and his position. But when he found himself in a precarious situation, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He knew the power of prayer. We have to know our purpose, our potential, our position, and how to pray. Why? Because whether you realize it or not, it really is your time. I, I was listening to the wine, and some of y'all don't know them, but they came out with a song, It's Time to Make a Change, with, uh, I believe it was Teddy Riley. Yeah. And they came out and said, it's time to make a change. They didn't say somebody else could do it. But he said, we are the people that can do it. Yeah. The scripture says, if my people, which are called by my name, I would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then we would hear from heaven, forgive the sins, and heal the land. Uh -huh. I know the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, spiritual wickedness in high places. I believe that, but there's a war going on. It's praying time for the saints. It's praying time. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Fathers, we come now. We do glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you because you're worthy. We lift you up and magnify you on this day because we thank you that you can give us purpose, potential, and position. But for all that to work for our good, teach us to pray even as you taught your disciples. They had potential and purpose, but you taught them to pray. So even for our graduates that are moving on and they've made it to this level, Help them to pray for greater increase. Help them to pray for a hearing ear. Help them to pray to hear your voice. And we declare we'll give you the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. This morning, wherever you are, amen. Wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, uh, you might be on the telephone. Uh, uh, wherever you are, you might be uh, resting in your bed. Wherever you are. Ah, uh, you might be uh, drinking your cup of coffee wherever you are. Uh, you might eat, be eating your ba bacon and eggs. Just, just for a minute, pause with me. Let's take a collective pause. Maybe this morning, you, you know, we, we do church. We do church. And, and the interesting thing about the text and the story is at the time when it happened, uh, the Jews could not worship in their own synagogues. Mm. And here it is, 2020. My God, we can't worship like we want to in our own synagogues. And we have to be creative in our worship. Won't God do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he, yes, he will. This morning, if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, <laughs> you can do it virtually. I, I want you to use uh, my words and, and, and your voice. If you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I've, I've, I've missed the mark mm -hmm. and I've fallen short. But today, God, I confess that you are Lord of my life. I confess that you give me position. You give me potential. You give me purpose, and you give me direction. Now, Lord, I need you to come into my heart, to reign in my life, and to be my Lord. 
I thank you. I receive you. I honor you. And I adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, the second time, the third time, it's all right because it's not a matter how many times we fall down, but that we do get back up again. And so this morning, if you've prayed that prayer, we ask that you would call the church office or, or you can get in touch with Pastor C. Amen. At Pastor C at ubame.org. Again, that's Pastor C at ubame.org. You can go to the website, uh, union, union, ubame.org, and you can get all the information. You can call the office because we want to be in touch with you. He wants to reach out and know that you are maybe virtual, but you're in a virtual church with 2020 vision, moving in the right direction. Then if you're watching, maybe you don't have a church home. You, you stream, you now you're really church hop. Praise the Lord. Amen. You were at one time, but now you flip from channel to channel. Don't move, don't move too fast. But we invite you to come and be a part of this fellowship where God is doing amazing things under the great leadership of Pastor C. And so we just asked this morning, if you don't have a church home, you can join us virtually until we can connect uh, all together. The day is coming because guess what? It's your time. It's your time. Make a decision today. It's your time. Don't grow weary in well-doing because it is your time. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother, because it is your time. Hallelujah. Come on, where you are, give God a praise. Or go ahead and throw up a hallelujah. Throw up a shout. Amen. Because somebody's making a decision. Come on, don't you know your praise? I can't hear your praise, but God hears your praise. And as you praise God, God's making a move on somebody's life. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody's on Facebook. Somebody's streaming, and they're watching you praise God for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And amen. To God be the glory for the great things he is doing and has done and will continue to do. Why? Because it's your time. Getting out of my sisters and my brothers, let's now prepare to receive our offering as we come and give and receive our offering. As God commands us, he said, bring your tithes and your offerings to the storehouse of God and whereby put him to the test and see if he won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. I do understand that we are virtual right now, but the work and ministry of the church still goes on. Uh, we, have a bat, uh, we have gifts that are going on out to the community, Bibles going out to the community, because we still are doing the work of ministry here at Union Bethel. Hallelujah. We may not be able to be in the building, but the ministry and the work of ministry still goes on. Somebody say amen. And so this morning, we invite you to come and bring your tithe and your offering to the storehouse of God. You can give online. You can go to Realm. You can go online. You can use Givelify. You can also mail in your envelopes. Amen. Some of us still like to write a check, praise the Lord, somebody, and mail in their envelope. And so do those things, please, as you come and give. God has not been short with you, so please don't be short with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Fathers, we come. Thank you for an opportunity and time to give. Bless the gift and the giver. God, pour into us as we sow into you. And we thank you for all that you've done and you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, it is your time. It is your time, and God is in the miracle-working and blessing business. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God, and his wonders are to perform, and we glorify and magnify him for his faithfulness towards us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, just hit somebody on the on the, the Facebook. Hit them on the book. We're going to call it the book. Hit them on the book and let them know it's your time. En encourage somebody for the journey. Encourage somebody for the journey and let them know it's your time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are so grateful to God and all that he's doing. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, while we're preparing for our announcements, praise the Lord. I got a little poem. Can I read it, Pastor? Amen. Praise the Lord. This is for our graduates. Amen. We're so grateful to God. The poem says, life without a purpose is barren indeed. There can't be a harvest unless you plant a seed. There can't be attainment unless there's a goal, and a man's but a robot unless there's a soul. And unless there's a contest, nobody can win, for games can't be played unless they're played to win, and prayers can't be answered unless they're prayed. So whatever's going wrong in your life today, you'll find a solution if you kneel down and pray, not just for pleasures, enjoyment, and health, not just for honors, prestige, and wealth, but pray for a purpose to make life worth living and pray for the joy of unselfish giving. For great is your gladness and rich your reward when you make your life's choice the choice of the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on now, put your hands together and let's receive Pastor C as he comes. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen and amen. Oh, come on and give the Lord glory and praise. How many of you will declare to one another that it is, it's your time? And we thank God for his grace and favor. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the preacher of the word. Thank God for the power of the word. And as we go forth in that word, we thank God for what he is doing. Thank you for your gifts. We bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank God for this message today uh, that reminds us that no matter what is going on around us, it is our time to make a difference. So God bless you. Graduates of 2020, we salute you and praise God's blessings upon you. Let's, uh, let's be dismissed from this place. Every heart and mind is clear. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and honor, dominion and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Remember this message. It's your time. We sincerely hope you were blessed by the preach words spoken through Reverend R. Hamilton Crump as we showcased our Union Bethel 2020 graduates on today. We celebrate their promotions, their advancement to higher learning, and their future endeavors. Congratulations! The Outreach Ministry is accepting July share orders. Your orders are due by Sunday, July 5th. The menu options include the value box, the breakfast box, the breaded shrimp box, and the chicken leg quarters box. Please submit your order request to email address U-B-A-M-E outreach at gmail.com or call telephone number 301-372-2969. The Congregational Care Ministry here at Union Bethel is available and willing to give our church family emotional and spiritual support. Please contact Rev. Kim Hutchison at email address khutchison at ubame.org or call the church office at 301-372-6036 for guidelines and information. An executive order was issued for Prince George's County to enter a full Phase 2 reopening on Monday, June 29th at 5 o'clock p.m. Consider the safety of yourself and others and we encourage you to use good judgment and continue to take all precautions. For more information, visit mypgc.us slash reopen. Our continuous prayers for your health, safety, and welfare. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. Invite your friends and family to join us on live streaming, Facebook Live, and conference call. Have a safe and blessed week. All right.